inflation is breaking out in, in a big way. It's not, it's not going to return to where it was before this latest inflation breakout and inflation and, and the collapse of fiat money is here. Now people are feeling it right now mm -hmm. and the quality of life all over the world is being impacted by it. And it's being impacted in the U S you know, people can't buy a home. People can't afford food. Price of uh, oil and energy is now starting to ramp back up again. So it's, it's playing out right now. And there's, um, there's nothing that can be done to stop this inflation. Welcome back to Unscripted Crypto, where we delve deep into the financial realm. Max Kaiser has brought to light the undeniable surge in inflation, which is impacting everyday life. He rightly points out the eroding quality of life not just in global corners but right here in the U.S., but have you ever wondered why inflation has turned into such a pressing issue? The answer lies in the intrinsic problems associated with fiat currencies and their mismanagement. As prices rise and homes, food, and basic amenities become unaffordable, the call to address this challenge becomes even louder. We'll now dive into some of the core reasons behind these economic shifts. The economy is completely out of control, right? So the, even the interest on the debt in the U.S. is now over a trillion dollars. So I think it's the biggest line item on the budget, bigger than the military. So there's, you know, that's what we were told for decades was, oh, you know, um, trickle down economics or what have you, you know, we're, they were going to grow the economy and those, the increased tax revenues, we're going to pay down our debt. That, that was the theory for years, you know, that they're going to uh, stimulate aggregate demand and it's going to cause GDP growth, which will increase tax revenues and we're going to pay down our debt. Well, that never, ever, ever happened, and it predictably never happened. It was just about printing more money and a lot of malinvestment, that is to say, thieving going on, and the capital disappearing. Trillions of dollars just going into a global black hole controlled by the big four accounting firms, this floating casino that never pays taxes, which is now over $30 trillion in big, right? There's always only two possible pathways. Either you, you enter into a fatal type of hyperinflation or you're just going to default across the board and you go into a, a deflationary depression. So it's, it's a depression in either way. It's either an inflationary depression um, like you see in, in like a Zimbabwe or it's a deflationary depression like you had in the 1930s. But either way, the quality of life is deteriorating and it's doing so in the U.S. in a big way, and so, and and there's there's no nobody's coming forward with anything, any solutions because it's past having a solution. Uh, meanwhile, there are now three or four candidates for president and other political offices that are talking about Bitcoin, right? So RFK Jr. talks about Bitcoin. Ron DeSantis talks about Bitcoin. Cynthia Lummis has also been talking about Bitcoin. So people, the you know, political class is beginning to see uh, Bitcoin as part of the solution going forward. And as you start to get into more of a Bitcoin frame of mind, um, you know, this is this will be a transition um, from the fiat money world to a Bitcoin standard. And it'll be driven not I don't see it taking decades, you know, because it'll be the result of another colossal wave of bank failures, which is baked into the cake. Really, the, the banks are insolvent. They're held together with the counting chicanery. There's nothing there. The central banks are completely devoid of any assets whatsoever. They're leveraged worse than Enron. I think the Federal Reserve is leveraged 90 to one or something like that. It's completely the Bank of Japan, which is really the linchpin central bank in the world. If you want to know really, and you want to follow the global central bank, you would follow the Bank of Japan because they've always been the funding currency for many decades now where other central banks would borrow from the Bank of Japan and invest in higher yielding currencies in what's called the carry trade. And mm -hmm. To, to try to extract another 20 or 30 basis points. The Bank of Japan has always been the cheapest 
source of funds and they because they've been tapping into their country's pension funds which were overfunded by billions of dollars for many years and they've kind of run out of that and they've run out of that money and they're going bankrupt and now um japan it looks like it's entering into um default and that will drag everybody else down with it following from max kaiser's insights the economic landscape is looking more treacherous than ever it's shocking to realize that even the interest on the U.S. debt now surpasses a trillion dollars, overshadowing even the military budget. And while theories about stimulating the economy through increased tax revenues and paying down our debts sounded good on paper, they haven't materialized. But there's a silver lining, the growing political discourse around Bitcoin. As candidates and politicians begin to recognize its potential, could Bitcoin pave the way for a new financial era? Let's examine how Bitcoin might fit into the picture as an alternative to the fiat system, especially with looming bank failures and a potentially insolvent financial system. If you look at the shitcoin market, which is like 25,000 shitcoins, it's actually a mirror of everything else. It's like the shitcoin market is actually the market. That's the way everything is. It's completely mispriced nonsense. Um, it, it, and the shitcoiners didn't invent market manipulation. You know, they're just mimicking what the system already was, you know, and it's interesting to, for me, who's been in the business for over 40 years to see how the regulators have responded to it, particularly Gary Gensler over at the SEC and and this growing awareness about what's really going on with these shitcoins and how the shitcoiners have been able to play dodge, you know, hide and seek with regulators for so many years. And the regulators are very slow to act. And so the, the more sophisticated shitcoin scams are aware of that. And the way that they constructed themselves was to purposefully avoid the regulatory scrutiny. You need regulation. Everything is regulated. Now, the thing about Bitcoin is that it's self, it is self-regulating and it is perfectly regulated within itself. It's inert within itself. That's what gives it the aesthetic beauty. That's why it's artistic. Mm. When you look at the Sistine Chapel, you, it's self-referentially perfect or beautiful or aesthetically pleasing because it obeys the laws of art or architecture or vision or or perception or it it, it, it it obeys certain laws of, of of innate to human beings in terms of what we consider to be art uh, versus schlock right um, mm -hmm. there's a difference and so with bitcoin all that is self-contained and so it, it that's why regulators can't touch it and won't touch it is because it already has achieved escape velocity and it's already perfect and referentially to itself and that and it's and it's going to continue on it on its path on its vector with or without humans you know we need bitcoin bitcoin doesn't need us picking up on the last point the efficient market theory that we've all believed in for so long seems more like a myth now max kaiser illustrates how the financial markets are less about actual supply and demand and more about manipulation with no true price discovery, we find ourselves in a world of mispriced assets and misinformation. The entire realm of cryptocurrencies and other markets mirrors this chaos. However, amid the regulatory confusion, Bitcoin stands out with its self-contained, self-regulating design. This begs the question, can Bitcoin, with its perfect self-referential structure, bring about the financial revolution we so desperately need? And as Max concludes, we need Bitcoin, Bitcoin doesn't need us. In light of these revelations and potential shifts in the financial world, we're curious about your thoughts. Question for the audience. Do you believe Bitcoin can be the solution to our financial woes, or is it just another tool in the financial playground? Let us know in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to Unscripted Crypto for more such deep dives.